hello everyone so today i'm going to show you how to sorry i'm going to show you how to use snaptoon i made another video on how to find your 3d models for your webtoon backgrounds and today i'm gonna show you how to render it thanks to snaptoon if you already have been on my channel you know that i am a fan of this software so when i discovered it i wanted to share it and so i just wanted to thank you all for the attention the first video got so i hope this one will also got some attention because to me the snaptoon developer really deserves all the attention so let me first introduce you to Snaptoon. Snaptoon is an engine where you can put lights and shadows and filters and take kind of like screenshots of your backgrounds and it's just super useful for your comic or webtoon backgrounds. It is very simple and intuitive to use. Snaptoon is free and you can import Skippy files in it so it's really super useful. And here you can download it. Just go on the Snaptoon Wearos website. Go on Snaptoon here and you have here the download button so I, I always use this one the last update is from august 25 and so you just have to download this file here for the backup is just all the old version of Snaptoon, so just take this one here this is all you have to do you just have to download it here and let it download by itself for the other parts of the website you have another video that i posted just before this one about all the 3d models you can find on the internet so just go and check it out so now that you have your Snaptoon downloaded, you will have a zip file, just extract it and you will have a folder like this. But you have to know some notes that for me makes the software works perfectly. So first I want to put my Snaptoon in the same folder as my 3D models. As you can see here, I have a 3D models folder. This is why I'm hiding it because I have a shortcut on my desktop. So here you have your folder, double click on it and here is your Snaptoon. So what I personally do is right click on it send to my desktop here create a shortcut and this is why after that i just right click on it properties and hidden here in some past videos i already showed how to take your old versions saves to put on the new version but i'm gonna show again here first you go on your old snaptoon version go on snaptoon and saved. This folder, you just want to copy this one, the whole folder. You go on your new version here, Snaptoon, and then you just paste it and replace everything. And tada! So Snaptoon will not appear here, but it will appear on my desktop. Where did I put it? <laughs> here. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is the new version. You already have some short skirts and if you want more, you just click here or here or here. And so if you don't want to lose time with my tutorial, like the video tutorial, you have the manual here. So it explains how to use it. You just click on, for example, here and you have a tiny video. So it's really complete. Like if you just don't want me to show you in a video, you just can totally just click here. All the links will be in the description. Since I'm French, I'm just putting my keyboard in. In English, which I recommend if you have another keyboard than QWERTY one. So first things first, a lot of you asked me in the comments of my first video how to remove the logo and it's really simple. You just click on it, press delete on your keyboard and it's gone. Now if you want to take off the fire, just click on the floor first, press delete. And now instead of clicking on the flame, you just want to click here on the tiny piece of wood here and press delete. You have nothing else to do. So first here, here you have the off button, so to just leave Snaptoon. Here you have the first screen you had at the beginning. Here you have some settings. If you want full screen or windowed, choose also the resolution. The language, English, Korean, Japanese or, J or Chinese, sorry. <laughs> here you can take a screenshot and here you have the Snaptoon warehouse. Now let's open a 3D model. I know that some of you were really, really lost about where to open it because some of you didn't understand that when you open a Snaptoon model in the new versions of Snaptoon, it appears here. So it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> it can be a bit confusing at first, but let me show you. So here you can create folders. I have it for some of my projects. To create a folder, just click here and you can rename it like this. So as you can see, it's now blah blah. <laughs> so let's just delete. Now to import the 3D, you just click on 
icon here, this tiny button right here, and now you just can select the model you want to open. So as you can see, I opened an SKP file, which is really, really great because on icon you have a lot of SKP files. So here you can select the layers you want or don't want. I think about the lights sometimes that can be a bit weird in 3D models. You know, in SKP, the flames are always 2D objects, which can lead to be a bit weird, but let's keep everything. So now you have to wait. Now I know it's done and it's not like open in front of you. It's okay because it has been loaded here and we just have to grab it and put it here, right in the middle of the screen. And ta-da! As you can see, you have your model. Now that we have our 3D model, I will show you how to really use Snaptoon. So first, what I'm going to show you is right here at the right bottom of the screen. This is the speed of your movements. <laughs> here, as you can see, I'm just really fast when I move. And if I select just one, I will be way slower. So here you have some options. When you click on an object, if you want to change the scale, you just click on the scale. If you want to rotate it, you can rotate it like this or even like that. And if you want to move it, you can totally with the arrows here. Let me just take off the tiny window so it will be better. Just a tiny reminder, but if you want to delete things, you just have to click on it and press delete. Also, you can, for example, open windows, which is really great. And it's the same for kind of everything, for example, the door or even the chair here. Let me just... I can rotate it so you can change kind of like everything. For these options, you can also press your spacebar of your keyboard. It also works. Now to move, it's kind of like the camera in The Sims 4. The right click is to rotate kind of like around you. So the wheel is for moving here. Also, when you maintain the wheel of the mouth, you are able to move like this. It's not around you, it's more like moving a picture like this in 2D. If you see what I mean, just look at the screen and you will probably understand more and the left click of the mouse is to select objects so now let's talk about the categories we are going to start with light here let's start off with the sunlight so at first you have your sun really like white and kind of basic but you can change the color but i'm gonna show you that a bit later so first you can change the height so as you can see the horizon also turns kind of like orange so this is really something that i love with snapton but you can also change here the direction of your sun so if you prefer it to be at the right for example and it will be here <laughs> now that i changed my direction and my height i just can change also the power of the sun which is absolutely stunning i just love doing this so let's yeah just make it a bit more powerful so you can also turn off the shadows and you can also turn off the skylight so the skylight is like the ambient light that the sun brings because since things are reflecting the lights you can see all the room even if the sun is just here so yeah you can turn off the skylight which I think it's really great to make some drama scenes. If you don't want the skylight to be all black but you can like the effect, you can change the skylight intensity. I like to put it a bit under what's basically here. It is always on 1.5 but I prefer to put it on 1 which I think is it just makes the sun brighter without turning all the skylight black. You can also change the shadow distance but here you cannot really see it because we don't have a large distance object. Now that you have changed all of this you can turn the sun for example blue which i like to do to actually make it more like a moon and just put a filter on it that i will show you again later but that we just show you here quickly so as you can see it's the night now let's just uh, maybe bring everything back at normal because i'd love to show you something else so now we are done with the sun. Let's talk about the spotlight and the point light. These two are kind of like the same, but the spotlight will be like a cone, like a triangle. So, so the light will be always under the cone, but never here, like around it. And for the point light, it's all around. It's like a globe. Most of the time I use the point light because I have a lot of candles, etc. But the spotlight can really be useful for lamps, etc. So let's put a 
tiny point light here let me just navigate also you can you know grab the object and just instead of grabbing the arrows you can grab the objects directly and just move it around so for the point of light you can change the power of it the range so the range is the distance the light will be able to go through so here i can change the color if i put my light here or even here and change the range a bit i like to use this for candles it's super like useful because you can put tiny point of light with a tiny range and a tiny power and just put it on every candles you have in your room so let's just keep it like this maybe make it like green okay it's nice it's also really nice if your character is using a power in your scene you can totally use this make your background like this so you don't have to make it in clip studio or any software you're using for your webtoon also now that we have our point of light we are not talking about the spotlight because again it is the same principle so as i said sometimes i use it for many candles but you don't want to you know again make the power again make the color like put the color here so you don't want to you know lose your time doing it over and over when you have many lights that are the same to duplicate the lights you just click on it press your left alt button of your keyboard and just draw drag it here and ta-da! you have another light the exact same one now let's go to the part that i like so for the style it's a lot of filters and every details you can put on it from the start you have this wire here that is put on and it's basically the line art of your background you can change the color of it if i want to make it red it's giving you so much possibilities and i just love it so much just for you to see better let's put it black again and you can change the thickness you also can change the distance if you don't want the, the things that are far away from you to appear too much you can change the distance of it the line art of it will be thinner this is an option that i use a lot so let's just take a look at the other wires here you have this one which makes the outline a bit more standing out and the inline the lines inside a bit more thinner with the wire too it's more for the outlines to appear it's not taking all the details and for the first one here it's kind of like the fourth one so let's put back the fourth one let's talk about here here, the filters sometimes you don't have you have a more like cartoony style or a more like anime style you can totally change the aspect of your background with the paintings here i'm not using this because it's not my webtoon style so i always use the basic one but i think the cartoon one is really interesting especially the number two because you can change the dark tint and the light tint and these ones are really funny to play with if i want my dark tint to be really blue you can really make such a fun dual chrome scene with it for example i want to make my light tint yellow it's just so fun it's just so nice i just love it so much i really like actually this filter and i sometimes use it for drama scenes or past scenes or flashbacks etc and for the cartoon one it's just giving a bit more in depth in the shadows so you can control any layer of shadows as you can see here so this one is a bit more complicated to use but also a lot more complete so now let's talk about the screen tone it's just like giving a screen tone I, I don't know what other words to use for this but it can give so much effect so if you want to draw a manga it's just super useful so now let's talk about the colored AO so I don't know how to explain this one I just want you to look at the screen and understand but it's kind of like the through dark shadows that you can color in any way you want I just can't wait to use this because I, I just love the effect I don't know why but I just love this effect effects so much it's just so nice look now let's talk about the snow and the rain you can just make the snow really thicker and you can also make the speed like zero or one don't worry when you turn off the snow it's just take a few seconds to take it off completely or the rain is the same thing you just you know can play with the power can play with the speed etc so now let's talk a little bit about the distance fog it's just a fog that you can change like the color etc you have the near fog which is in front of you and as you can see you can make so much gradient backgrounds etc and it's giving such a nice effect i think and you also have the fog that is far away from you so let's turn off this one for you to see better and you can play with the opacity the distance also let's make it close the edge sharpness so if you want the fog to appear really strong or not and it's super nice so here obviously it doesn't work that much because we have a room but for huge backgrounds 
backgrounds like landscape backgrounds. Now let's talk about the light fog, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite options. Uh, this is something I really use a lot. Turn it on. I just love this option so much. So you have the, the base of the color here. So let's make it a bit strong because I just want you to really see it. So again, like the fog, you have some options to make it pop or not. And something I like to do is make it a bit orange or red to really emphasize the sun. Let's keep it like this because I just love it like that. Again, you just have to play with it so you can make it more opaque or not. You can also play with the distance. Let's make it glowy. Now let's play with the radial blur. If you want to make backgrounds that are really action types of backgrounds, you can totally play with the radial blur. Or if you have a character that is drunk or anything, you can totally use this. Oh, oh, that's a kind of cool effect. I didn't know I could do that. Turn it off. Now let's play with the blur so you can make things that are far more blurry. So let's turn this off and now let's talk about the bloom which I always use. So it is from the start on so you can take it off and as you can see it's giving kind of like a dreamy vibe. So you just make it glow a bit more or a bit less. So I just like it the way it is right now. Now let's talk about the background. So something that I like with Snaptoon is that you can put a sky behind it because as you can see here it's just plain white and you can download some skies I just like to put it's a bit sunset so let's make this Ta-da! you have a sky let me just take this off a bit okay and so as you can see it's super nice it's just giving the final touch without you editing your backgrounds after that so now let's talk about the filters right here and basically it's just filters so black and white you have a lot of filters that they are have done so if you have a particular style maybe like the old one etc it's just giving the final touch of your backgrounds again look at this for the flashbacks it's just it's incredible i just love it so let's turn this off now let's put some final touches with the camera for the camera you have obviously the FOV and the fisheye is really nice too. Aperture works with the focus distance as you can see is this distance where the focus will be done. The focus is the blurry and the aperture is like the opening of the focus so if the aperture is really wide your focus will be centered in all this part and so this is what the aperture is. It's kind of hard to explain but I would just show you right now. Here the aperture is really tiny so only this part is really clear but if you just make the aperture bigger the focus will be wider and so you will be able to see a bit more of the focus. It's really hard to understand so I really hope you can be able to understand from what I'm showing on the screen. So the clipping distance is one of the best tool also. All of the Snaptoon tools are incredible but so the clipping distance is incredible because first if I want to take a screenshot here but I want a wider picture but without using the fish eye like this. I don't want the fish eye but I still want to have a larger picture. I will take a few steps back but there is a wall that hiding things from me. So the clipping distance will actually cut things and ta-da! You have a larger picture but without the fisheye. Choose the distance where you want to cut. And I think this is really fun to play with to make some Barbie dollhouse. And so if I get closer to this, it will cut it out because the clipping distance is still on. So let's make it zero again. Now we have the exposure, the contrast, the saturation. It's just the basic like camera settings. So you have the exposure here, contrast, and you also have the saturation. Again, the saturation can be really useful for tools who have a lot of poppy colors <laughs> in their webtoons. And now we have the color filter that I used before. So just click on the, the white square here and choose the color. For Dawn, I always put a bit of orange just to be more in the mood. But again, if I want to make more like a night scene, I just totally make it blue and put the same light blue to make like the moon. And I also change the light fog, obviously. Isn't it so pretty? I just love this software so much. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say that like every time. But it's it's true, it's true. You will be able to save the scenes. And so you just have to make your backgrounds once. And after that, you can use it whenever you want and just take screenshots. And it's just so much faster when you make your chapters to take a screenshot and then go to CSP. Then just add lights on CSP every time on every background and add shades, etc. It's just taking so much less time like this i just recommend doing this and as you can see the results are just stunning so 
Now let's talk about the scenes which I was talking about before. You can save the mood of your scenes, so it will save your placement, it will save your sun color, the lights you placed, etc. So let's talk about the screenshots at the end, don't worry. I already have a lot of scenes that I saved, so let's just save this one. To save this one, you just want to click on save here and name it uh, Snaptoon vid. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm on the QWERTY keyboard, I forgot. Now let's open something else. So now I'm opening a background that I saved for my webtoon. I have all my lights placement, etc. Maybe I'm just gonna show you the night mode. It will be more showing what I'm saying. And ta-da! As you can see, it just saved all my lights, all my placements, all my sun color, etc. And when I want to come back to the one we just made before, everything is placed the same. To open a scene, you can also either double click on it or you can just click once and click on open here. You can make a new scene. Let's just not save this one. Or you can create a new save from this one. So for example, we have our first scene here. You want to create a new one, like the same exact one with the same placements, etc. With the day mood, you just click on save as. Let's call it Snaptoon Vid Day. And now I can change the colors. I'm just gonna take this off. Oh, I, I like the colors like this. The fog in blue. I just love it. Now let's save it. So just go on scene, save. And now when you go on Snaptoon Vid, you have the night version. And when you go on the Snaptoon Vid Day, you have the day version. You can duplicate it and you can also refresh the list. Okay, so now let's get to the final part. So what you want to do is being here, place yourself wherever you want. Here you have the resolution scales. So the resolution is what you have here. So this is your resolution. So if you have the resolution 1.0, you will have a screenshot the size of your resolution. So this size. But I always put two to make it bigger so it will be twice your resolution so i put two here and for the view you can either screen the full view or the frame and you can totally change the size of the frame let's make a movie frame your screenshots will now like not be the whole screen but only your frame the default mode is like the default screenshot you want to take just the default screenshot you want to take with all the colors and light mark here you have the preview of the line only so you can totally take a screenshot of only the line work and color by yourself after that. Just feel free to check whatever you want to take. You can take, for example, the line work and the default screenshot. Let's do this. And the final step is to take your screenshot and just click on picture. And as you can see here, ta-da, you are taking screenshots. And to find your screenshots, you just click here and ta-da, you have all of your screenshots. I use the actual cartoon number two filter. Here you have what we just took right now. You have our screenshots, you have the long one. I just love this one so much, it's just so pretty. You have the line works. Here you have other screenshots that are already took. Here I just love this one. Here it was for an illustration. I'm just gonna put some examples of the illustrations I made with the Snapton backgrounds. Oh, and by the way, I know you can be afraid about that, but let's open um, Snapton again. As you can see, we have the point of light here. Don't worry when you take your screen let's take a picture pretty quickly as you can see you just don't see the points of light so don't worry about that it's disappearing when you take the picture I think this is everything if you want to see how I put the screenshots in my webtoon I'm just gonna tell you to refer you to this video right here the links will be in the description I really hope this video helped you you were a lot to ask me how to use Snaptoon so I'm just hoping this helps and again please support them and see you next time in the next video bye bye